Hello my beautiful and lovely gamers, my name is Jonze, we're breaking down some High Master Genji gameplay that I was playing uh, some days ago. We're doing this mainly and we're gonna focus today on being active. How to give pressure, how to look for kills, and, and how to constantly have an impact on that match. This is where we will be doing a lot of good stuff on defense and make us a pretty flashy place but mainly we're going to focus on that game sense part and also how to get a little bit easier shot get a, how to build your play a little bit faster that kind of stuff is what we're focusing on today now before we start of course liking the video always helps against you just algorithm all that stuff comment down below if you like this what heroes you want to see in the future all that stuff do really help out but i want to address a question that i've seen i'm currently making some valorant content and you guys have probably noticed that i'm posting four videos in a row or something similar of valorant and is am I leaving Overwatch? There's a lot of pros that have been this that have been leaving Overwatch. The answer is no. I'm not leaving Overwatch. If I'm leaving Overwatch, I promise I will tell you I still coach contenders. I still have private coaching. I have private coaching currently with a bunch of people. But if you're interested in supporting the channel, supporting me, you can hire me still as a private coach for 50 euros for a two hour session if you want to rank up and get better at this game. I still love Overwatch. It's still one of my favorite games. The reason I'm branching out to Valorant is one, I love the game. It's so fun. It's satisfying. It's what I like. I think that it really hits the tone between Counter-Strike and Overwatch for me at least because I'm already like the Counter-Strike uh, gunplay, but there's also add the abilities which just makes the game more fun, at least from my point of view. But even more so, it's also for stability of the channel. I've been talking about this, and if you're an old school viewer, you already know this, that I've been trying to branch out to games like Battlefield or Call of Duty for a very long time. Because I love FPS games. I don't, on purposely, I have not branded myself as Journal Overwatch. I'm Journal Gaming, because I love all types of games, especially FPS. However, Overwatch has been my thing, because I coach it professionally. I play this game the most. It's my main game for a very long time which has made it very difficult for me to reach out to other stuff but because you guys have been amazing and supporting me on valorant be supporting those videos liking them and getting them views so they get into the algorithm past some of these bigger blockbuster players because this is a kind of middle ground between my community and a new open fps market it helps me a lot and it helps the stability of my channel which has given me anxiety if i get tired of overwatch what happens then if I'm an Overwatch only channel, you guys don't, most of you don't want to watch Battlefield or Call of Duty content from me. So if I want to branch out to FPS games, I want to first, I need to choose a game that I really, really like. And then on top of that, I got to somehow make content that you guys also want to watch. And that's very difficult with an Overwatch demographic. But Valorant seems to be doing really, really well. I love the game and therefore I'm branching out to other games, but I'm not quitting Overwatch. I promise you that. You don't need to unsubscribe. And if I ever want to quit Overwatch, I will make sure to make a video that I'm tweeting and putting on Discord and so on, talking about if I ever want to do that. Right now, I don't see myself doing that. I'm just also making other video game content. But thank you guys so much for the support on Overwatch, on every other game. Um, so thank you so much. Now, let's do this breakdown. We'll be focusing on a couple of very key things here. As I said, activeness is the main priority. I mean, the good thing is just to start the VOD and talk about it. So I'm just spamming left door or right door because I know the tanks are mostly pushing out left door. That's what happens in, in my ELO. Almost every single tank that I, that I watch normally likes to push out the left door. So I'm just spamming the right door. It's just a thing. Right here, I'm just spamming, keeping up the choke because I want to... As soon as I start seeing this, as soon as I start seeing them, now I have my Ryan here, so I know their their push is slow. If I don't see my Ryan up here, I would fall back much earlier because I would be scared to push. But because I saw that my Ryan is here, it's very common that we push up here and try to hold this choke. I back off a little bit slower, right? Because I want to be close, so I, one, can potentially do a dash reset into them. Um, but also, two, if I do stay up here, it's easier for me to hit some of these shots, and it becomes more difficult for them to hit some of me. So that's kind of why I'm playing this close and not backing off super, super fast or burning my dash super fast. Is because I want to... It's not necessary for me to burn dash, because there's so much pressure, there's so much beefiness in the front line with Orion. And at the same time, I can just... If I need to dash away, I will do it if I, for some reason, get pushed. They don't have snipers or anything like that, so I'm all good. We get a kill onto here. There, Reinhardt fire strikes a car, so I can't deflect it, which is a fierce bad man. And then we continue kiting. Now I'm going to take top of here and just do some poking and try to create some different angles, right? Dropping down in between volley so I'm not as easy to track actually does a lot. That little drop where I still continue wall climbing is really good. 
Of course, dropping behind cover in between my reloads and in between healing waves are pretty good. Anti-Nate comes out. Notice how close I'm playing. Uh, of course, I would have liked to be up here at this point. Right? I would like to be on this high ground, not this low ground. But it just happened so that the enemy team is pretty smart. And they saw that I got pushed down from the high ground. I had to reload. I had to wait to get healed and so on. While I still, still wanted to keep pressure. And before I got to rotate back to my wall, they pushed. You can say that this might not be the most optimal thing to ever done. I should probably have landed closer to the wall or something like that. But in my head, it does not matter. Because I'm still off angling. I'm still maintaining even though it's a, it's not a safe off angle it's much easier to remove me from my off angle it's still an off angle these two positions right here when my reinhardt is here and their reinhardt pushes like that these two genji positions are both off angles i still do if this ryan tries to push into mine i still get off angle here i can still reach his Backline fairly easily. I can go up very very close and reach into this area where is where they will be active And a lot of people will also be active right here. So I still get it It's much easier for them to remove me They can send a sorry to run me down and I have to back off at that point, right? So it's much easier for them to remove me They can use a McCree to start shooting at me and taking me low So I have to again disengage this angle, but it's still an off angle I still get keep my pressure and that's important for is for me not to do this not to stack behind my Ryan if I do that then there's a very big chance that I can't do follow-up. I lose a lot of effectiveness over here. I lose a lot of overview about what's going on here. So I lose a lot of vision and information. And if they, my Ryan for some reason got pushed, I was supposed to back off. Just because sometimes they trade with their hammer and give space to not to minimize damage output on themselves. Then I would be stuck here because I can't advance into this Ryan. Furthermore, losing me accessibility to this area to force out attacks onto their backline in case somebody gets low so i lose targets at that point i can only target the ryan maybe the Saria, right from this angle over here if he gets pushed it doesn't really affect me as much if there's an opening here as i can potentially pressure in on the backline or continually hammering this ryan stopping him from pushing my ryan backwards as i would be dealing a lot of damage onto him so just a positioning talk because I've been covering off angle. I've gotten a lot of off angling position questions lately on private coaching. So I just decided to kind of clarify. Here, I'll be targeting the Ryan, not the two anti people. Of course, the two antis are also important in my dash here. I will engage this if you wondered, logically. But I'm targeting mainly the Ryan because I know that's the one that will be focused. That's the one that's currently being focused by my own Ryan and my own Saria. So that's why and I'm focusing currently on this Ryan. Again, we want the easiest kill, right? The easiest kill. We don't want to kill a support. We don't want to kill a DPS or a tank. Whatever you think is the easiest. And normally the easiest thing is whatever is getting hard focused by your team, especially your front line. So I'm going in here, dashing, getting a couple of kills, getting some dash resets. Here I target the Ana. Instead of the McCree, that was mostly because I knew the fight was lost and I didn't want the Ana to escape, even though I saw the McCree off angle. She sleeps me because she's good and I fucked up my rotation and I died. Which sucks a little bit because I wanted to be... If I'd poked here early in this as they, they, they're now leaving spawn, if I get some poke off, I can probably get 80% on my blade before it, before it even gets past the choke point. It's unlucky. I come back in here and I immediately do the one thing that I want and that is quickly poke, 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 poke and try to take some space here, right? That's what I want. They did not rotate as I expected, and now you can see the whole point of this positioning. Except the fact that the soldier is super, super, super far back here, um, and he can to a certain extent zone me a little bit. Notice how many enemies that I have access to right now. Of course, this soldier, again, he can pressure me, but I can also start playing out of his LOS and still be active in this main group. And that's the important thing. If I stay here on the ledge, yes, he will pressure me 100%, and I will back off or die. However, if I play outside of his LOS by playing close to this wall, jumping up and down, climbing and so on, I can still off-angle onto his main group. I can still frag out here. And the fact that he then stays far behind does that he has far less impact and far less pressure than what I do, even though he does more damage than me. Just because my positioning is better and he will have to stay so far away. Which again does that I'm actually achieve reducing damage not just by me dealing it but i'm also reducing pressure on my main group because this soldier can't advance that easily this is just going to be an anti and a bunch of dash resets into it which is not very difficult to pull off it's really just reaction time and this is what i'm talking about being active i always try to position myself as you can see and if i if i if i go back to when i when i come back here for spawn and played in a full duration because i'm pausing a lot here 
I'm always trying to keep pressure. From start to finish, I'm always looking first for lo always being in position so I can dash and get kills. If not, then I'm trying to deal physical health damage. And if not, then I'm breaking shield in that order, right? So here I saw an opportunity and I immediately went in and took it, right? And that's the important part. Constantly keeping that pressure is very, very important. Now, I have Blade now, so I want to burn this as fast as possible. And I'm scared that they have beat. Because our Lucio has beat. I don't know how, how good their Lucio has been doing it right now. So I'm taking worst case scenario. Even though I thought he, he might not have beat. I'm still like, okay, worst case scenario. He has beat. I haven't been paying attention to what he's been doing. So I'll focus him, if possible, first with the Nano Blade. So I'm going in here. Looking for an opportunity. They advanced a little bit too far. The Kree got low. The Kree got picked, meaning no stun. And then I went in, right? The stun was the win condition. So I was either going to wait for a co for communicating with Masari to get a bubble. Or I wanted to wait um, until I saw a Makri flashback come out. But because he got picked, it's a free engage, right? I always think about those loose conditions. Especially since there's so many Makri players now in the lobbies. Always look where he is. Always look how he can, do how he can use the stun. Try to do something that can also be... Landing with your landing with your dash still up when you have blade, deflecting at him to to make him de shoot deflect at your blade and then dashing, right? They get a graviton off here. I can't follow up on their graviton, and I'm gonna actually go in and try to do get something out of it, which was pretty bad, and die because of it. That is me tunnel visioning. There was comms on the fact that our Saria was supposed to grab early, and we still got grabbed. It was too far into choke, and I couldn't do a follow up. If we had let them a little bit closer in. And I had been on a high ground. I could potentially have done something there. I should definitely not have tried to pressure there. But that's how it happens. Right? I, I did a judgment call. Was hoping for a, a outcome that did not happen. And got shattered because of it. And that lost us. I'm running in here because I know that we have time for respawns. Right? So again, I just want that ult charge. That was a couple of seconds off. But it was also some ult charge. Which I probably could have maxed a little bit better. If I had targeted the Reinhardt. I could probably have done something more with my ult charge. But it doesn't matter. I died. I got a little bit ult charge of it. But I'm still back here early. So it didn't really matter that much that I died there. Because I knew my respawn was going to be fast enough. Now we're coming out here. And again, I'm just starting to pressure. I know I can't get a kill here. My team is not with me. I'm checking where my team is. Looking behind me. That's a pro tip. Please start doing that. Um, outside of that, I'm just poking. Here I'm... And this is the stuff when we talk about Genji movement. If you notice how I keep pressure while still disengaging this angle here. I'll slow it down a little bit. Right, I get some, I start poking, okay, can't, don't need to slow down all the way here, right here. Okay, so I don't know really where they are, I tried to shoot at this the Ryan, he wasn't there, clearly, remember, I can't see him through the wall here. I hope this McCree was going to be a little bit closer, he wasn't, I'm just spamming, spamming, spamming. Right, ducking between my volley, then I'm dropping here, because I was going to deflect some shots back, which she missed. And then, I drop like that, constantly using cover. I'm barely visible at all to the enemy team. Go back up here, getting some more poke on. Constantly targeting HP, right? I'm not targeting shield, I'm targeting health. Because I want blade and I want pressure, right? If I want to target shields, I'll pick a shield breaker. This is me being absolutely fucking aggro, way too aggro and trying to get a kill, which I should not have tried to get. Uh, I should have been punished there. And that's my fault. I had no clue why I engaged at Lucio. It looks absolutely stupid because I knew I couldn't kill him. But again... Keeping pressure, keeping pressure, constantly rotating to my high ground because I don't want to take hammer. Now, our Ryan dies here. I notice that. I'm pressuring, 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 right? Keeping up, looking for an opportunity. And this is where I'm saying it, right? I'm looking for an opportunity here. I'm playing close to my team. I'm like, okay, if somebody gets low, I can follow. This shoulder is too far, right? So it doesn't matter. So I can't burn him, right? So I'm like, okay, no opportunity. My Ryan dies. But I'm 88 on blade because I've been min-maxing my damage, constantly hitting soldiers, constantly hitting everything. That little extra damage, when I hit a squishy instead of shooting a shield, and I shoot it over the shield and I hit a squishy for a body shot, here and there, is what will win us this upcoming fight. So here I'm playing, look how aggressive I'm going to be playing this. My team is still here. We're still buying time off this card, right? Notice how aggressive I'm going to be. I'm going to jump in front of the Reinhardt, headshot him, take hammer damage, which is fine because I know I'm, we have nano. And as soon as they now commit, because I know, and we all know this, this is not like anything that just happens in Masters. They just got to pick. They're going to push. Right? They, just, they kill our main tank. They're going to push. So I'm going to dash. Nanoblade. Backline. Because the backline is bad. And they, oh, we won. Oh, we killed the one. Let's just W into them and see what happens. Right? Should have deflected that fire strike. Get a third kill. And that's a 4k. 
And that's because the constant have been min-maxing and staying active. Here I'm even now. Even though I'm playing against two hitskin, I'm still like, yeah, I'll poke, right? I'll poke. I see my Ryan is coming back here. I'm just trying to poke, take them out, make them low. I forced out the soldiers in mortality field because he saw me peeking against him. So he dropped ammo because probably he thought I was going to engage. And that did that he has to disengage the cards. Deflecting the fire strike, getting some extra damage in. And now we reclaimed. Them getting that pick got the card from here to here. That's what they got out of it. From getting that one pick and they burned their nano on it. That's pretty good. They also burned their shatter, I believe, right? So yeah, just keeping pressure, keeping pressure all the fucking way, right? One minute 45, I'm not thinking. Again, now I'm just building blade, building blade, deflecting a fire strike back, right? That's a graviton that came out way too early. It came out way too early, and our honor could have held the nade a little bit longer and potentially have hit the wall here and splashed, right? which is unlucky. Right? So this is a pretty scuffing. I'm just trying to see if I can do some follow-up here, get some damage in. But again, I'm not blindly charging into this with my dash. Because I am I know that the chance of us getting kills here are not very good. And that dash, it because it was only like two people, it won't make the difference between me getting my blade or not. It will help, but I'd rather want to be active now because I'm, I was hoping grav equals damage. Their main group is weak. Hopefully Orion will advance with shatter and I can clean up with dash resets. That's why I helped my dash here. I didn't care about the old charge because it wouldn't win this next fight anyway. I was rather thinking about this fight can extend. It's still winnable. Let's see what we can get out of it. They're going to pop visor and Orion's going to charge here so I can't follow. I would like to follow this, right? Because their Orion is pretty low here. But they pop visor so I can't. So instead I'm going to hold this angle and just spam and just hope for my best. Here I'm scared. I see my McCree is about to peek him. So I'm very scared for my McCree. So I'm going to peek myself, hopefully take aggro and pop the flag. But my McCree is a fucking beast. And somehow click his fucking head. Which I actually want to watch from his POV because I never did that. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Must warning. Okay. I just want to watch this shot. Visor, visor, visor. Oh, that's fucking clean, dude. Okay, sure. And here I'm gonna... Now, don't judge me for this. I dashed into a wall. I know. I panicked, okay? And don't don't judge the next disengage either, okay? Because I'm disengage, gonna disengage once more. Again, see how much... How little I fucking care about this area. Because I have blade. I have dashed in, right? Now, you can argue that I should have predicted that she's gonna solo grab me. But at the same time, no. Also, this is what I like to call high elo mentality. Notice that I got solo grabbed and my loser didn't give two flying fuck. This fishy quack dude didn't care. He's like, dude, you want to grab my Genji? Sure, I'll sound barrier. Notice this. Notice how many people are shooting me right now. There's an Ana, a McCree, a Lucio, and a hard charge sorry on my ass. And I and notice how good my supports are here. They burn everything they have, including Saria bubbles, sound barrier, everything up my ass to keep me up here. Which is so fucking good. And I cut back. And here I'm playing. Now, now you say, oh, Jonal, you're behind the Ryan shield. Why is that? Why don't you off-angle? There's two reasons. One, it takes time for me to off-angle. Two, we have a much weaker main group and currently be being pushed. Rotating here for me will cost me some time and will lower some of my damage output. So instead, because I don't need currently to deny any angles, right? There's no angles here to deny. It's just two tanks pushing really aggressively. And the off angle won't give me access to somebody that I don't already have access to, right? This Ana can play behind here on the card either way. And me taking this high ground will, one, isolate me away from my own supports. And two, will make sure that if I take pressure up here, I just have to drop again, right? So it will just force out more healing from my supports. And I don't really gain anything. Me taking this angle here, yes, I can kind of bully the Ana a little bit, but it won't kill her. I won't be able to get access to her because she's getting peeled right away. And she doesn't need to push into me because of the the pathing of the of the of the of the map, right? Unless we fall back all the way to here, she doesn't need to push up to follow her line. So she's she's not gonna push into me. Instead, I'm gonna stay in main and try to pressure these two tanks that are currently solo pushing without the DPSs. Rather stop these two from pushing into my Ryan, so we hopefully the, so he doesn't die and he doesn't lose that much space because I hope we can hopefully kill them. And again, I can still follow up on the effective area, which is these two bitches in the front line. Right, I'm hoping for something else. This is Saria, right? I'm kind of pressuring her a little bit. She's doing a really good job actually at off-angling. 
I'm bomb here. I'm just pressuring. Sound barrier, uh, not sound barrier. Um, yeah, there. Uh, yeah, sound barrier. Wait, am I dumb? Wait, what came out? Whatever, they ult. That's what I'm trying to say here, okay? Holy fucking shit. Yeah, sound barrier. Yeah, it was sound barrier. Why did I think it was wrong? Uh, high noon comes out, and for some reason, and this is like the stupidest shit. So, the reason I don't deflect this is because my sorry bubbles me instead of bubbling the Ryan. Because the Ryan dies. If not, this McCree would have been dead to my deflect. Well, not dead, but his deflect. I would have deflected back at him. And that's so fucking stupid, okay? So, yeah, this is a lost fight. They push in with most of their stuff. I tried to keep pressure in main, whatever. But because I tried, I kept a lot of pressure in main, I'm 9 to 6 on my blade. And I even managed to get out, which is pretty huge. So I get out here, I keep a little bit of pressure, I'm playing these crates, I'm going to high ground, I get forced, nanoed, I pop my blade, I get bubbled by Masari because Masari is a god. I should not have trusted that bubble. I, I do believe he called that he was going to bubble me, but I should not trust it, I should have probably popped the flecked anyway. But anyway, it works. And again, the only reason this has worked, two fights that we should have lost has been one, why? Because I've been active and building up a dragon blade. I've been keeping pressure, and I've been looking for kills. And we are losing main group fights here. There's not that many opportunities for me to follow up on damage, right? Here I'm just denying some high ground, and kiting backwards, deflecting like some shots, right? Just keeping pressure, right? We grab this Rhine, there's some fire strike coming out, right? If he had taken more damage, I would have followed, right? I tried to cover my Macree as much as I can. Dash here to get a health pack, because I don't want to die. Climbing to this high ground. Looking for some kills. Dashing up here to just clean up, because it's one anyway. And so on. So, yeah. so that is the VOD. So it's all about being active all the time. Building up those Dragon Blades, doing that little extra damage for the Squishy, staying alive, using off angles and trying to take high grounds and so on is very, very important, but not always, right? Sometimes you have to stay in main and just keep pressure. That's the one thing that we're constantly focusing on is pressure, pressure, pressure. And they were playing a stronger maker with far more damage than us because they were running soldier they were running kree while i was playing genji so i was playing the fact that i could off angle create pressure deal the damage building up those plates and winning fights off that and as you see it worked pretty well so that's all for today's video like comment subscribe all the good stuff it really does help out on the channel thank you guys for much for the support both for here on overwatch on valor meters all in between thank you so much i love you guys very much please take care of the positive as always my name is Joel, and you guys keep telling me, and you're all crossing.